Hello, hello, hello. Shin here, and welcome to R33. Now you might notice, uh, we're actually on Shadow's account right now. Um, he has modified the hair and face. There aren't a lot of options yet, but, um, he has done a little bit of editing just to make it a little bit different. This right here is the wiring tool. You need to pick up a piece of coal in order to unlock this, but it is available in all worlds. And Shadow has been nice enough to give us a tutorial on how uh, on how to use these machines. So let's go check out the tutorial. Um, you can't tell he likes Japanese stuff. Okay, remember to place blocks on interactive objects. Use Shift R or shift right click. That is something that they've added because in order to use certain things like pressure plates you have to be able to... Were you having fun in there? Okay. In order to be able to use things like pressure plates you might want to be able to put a block on them and using shift right click allows you to place the block on without interacting with the object. Sorry. Uh, trying to think right now. It's been a very long day. Okay, you will need a wiring tool. We have a wiring tool. It is this fun thing right here. And note that it says hover over a wire bowl for more info. These are all sorts of things like doors and switches and lights, and you can see some of the wiring pretty much visible. Uh, through the walls. Click on a hotspot to start wiring. Okay, and we can press V to hide all connections. We aren't going to do that right now though because we want to be able to see what we're doing. To examine, press N over an item. To modify, press K over an item. <laughs> you really like it in there, don't you? Okay, well let's get started. Welcome! Let's start with a the switch. There's the switch right there. And note that it has been rotated. Um, let's close that for a moment. Flip the switch to use the light. Okay. Interact, and it turns the light on. Press it again, shuts the light off. Press N to see the coding. Many connections code automatically. So let's get back to this. And note that it brings up a display. You can lock somebody out of being able to use these and by default it tends to lock anybody else out so that is something that the devs are working on for hotfix. But meanwhile um, just make sure that you have it set so that other people in your world can uh, interact with them if you want them to be able to manipulate them uh, and also to be able to program them. So this one says, switch, output connected, state is false, which means it's off. Can interact, yes we can. Click on a hotspot to start wiring, we don't need to worry about that. And then it gives the K and N commands and the V. <clears throat> Sorry. Oh. <clears throat> I don't know what I ate, but anyway. You see this little thing right here? That is the send. And... When you click on that, you can drag a line to receive. And let's just do that now. Let's press K to break the connection. So we can do this ourselves just to see. Click on it. And click on receive. And there we go. And if we were to close out of this, again, light on, light off. Easy peasy. So what have we got over here? This is a pressure plate, right there. When uh, It activates when weight is applied. Try standing on it, then try putting a block on it. Okay. And we stood on it and it turned the light on. Now, it says to try putting a block on it. We have wood selected. So shift, right click. And it turned the light on. 
removed, takes it off. Note that if the uh, if our little friend comes in here and stands on the plate, it will activate. Now examine the pressure plate. Do you see the delay reset option? Try changing it to two seconds. Please set it to zero seconds when done. So because this is meant for other people on the server who have uh, not yet experienced R33, of course this is a tutorial, so resetting settings is a good idea. So let's examine this. And you can see it has the basic information on there. Press N. Can interact. If you have this selected, anybody can interact with it. If you have it deselected, then nobody can actually use this plate. Um, obviously we want to keep it connected. Reset delay. Slide it over to 2. Hit save. Now step on the plate. Step off the plate. Step on the plate. Step off the plate. Note that when we left the plate, it delayed for 2 seconds before turning the light back off. That is, uh, rather the whole point of this exercise. So let's change it back to zero. And that is actually good for um, different types of lighting. If you want to delay something, uh, like turn it on, delay it, to turn off, and stuff like that, you can do that. Anyway, next toy. Note the delay gate below. It works like a delay reset option. Okay. Step on. Note that it's actually delaying when we turn it on as well. Step off. It takes a moment to turn off. So if you want to delay the light going on and off, you can use one of those. Again, fairly straightforward. The devices do get kind of complicated, but for the moment we're doing well. Okay, this inverter allows you to reverse the state of a device. This is great for traffic lights. Okay, let's just, uh, shut that off for a moment. Flip the switch, and it goes from green to red. Flip it again, and back to red. Okay, let's go back and take a quick look at the device, then and note that it, all, it just has the coordinates uh, placed in there. Again, that stuff all happens automatically when you connect the line, so there's no reason we need to really worry too much about that. Okay, fun stuff. Let's close this. This is a logic gate. Try stepping on either plate. Okay. lagging for a moment. Step on one plate. Okay, let's go over and step on the other plate. Ah. So either one we step on, we are going to be able to activate that. Now, shift right click, shift right click, and it's off. But if we were to remove just one, it's on again. It says uh, you can do many things with logic gates. So let's take a quick look at the logic gate. Press N. And note that it's set to XOR. XOR, if we hover over it, says outputs true if input 1 or input 2 is true, but not if both are true. Now, don't mind the very complicated sound of the... Uh, instructions here. All it's simply saying true means on, false means off. That's it. Zeros and ones is computer language. So if either of these switch plates are turned on, then it means that the logic gate is on. However, if both are on, it means that the logic gate is not on and therefore the light will not activate. And there are different settings. If you hover over it, will tell you what each one does. And that was a slight disconnect. 
didn't feel like filming me trying to reconnect again, so got a little bit of a break. Anyway, you can customize the LED colors. Try it on this block, okay? And note that this block is set so we can interact with it. And the lag hates me. There we go. So we can turn it on and off. So let's get our little tool out. Hit N. Note that it says can interact. If we shut it, if we shut that option off, then only a device can actually turn the light on or off. So right now the RGB is set to 255 each. If you've ever worked in Photoshop or another uh, such program, you will know that these options uh, actually dictate the colors that you can pick. So we can pick all sorts of fun colors. So here are some blues we can pick. I know that the higher the numbers, the lighter the color. If it's all zeros, then you end up with black. 255 each, you end up with white. That's actually what I usually end up seeing on the uh, screens. But you can get all sorts of happy blues, greens. That's a beautiful sea green. So let's see what that looks like. That's actually very lovely. That'd be great for an underwater base. So, that's a happy thing about the LED lights. And you can, uh, you can actually decorate an entire house with these if you wanted to. It would probably be a pain in the butt uh, going and individually marking each one so that uh, they're not interactive, but you can always do the, uh, activate them all, set them all the right color, and then basically just set them so that nobody can change the color of your house. Okay, this is another one, the flip-flop gate. We have not yet discussed flip-flop flip -flop gates. I cannot word. These merely switch a signal each time they're activated. Thus, it will turn something on for odd presses, off for even presses. So we do not actually have this connected to anything because it's pretty self-explanatory. You can see that uh, by looking at this, there is no special information in here. If we connect something, and flip a switch, it will change to position B. Flip the switch again, change to position A. If it's a pressure plate, it might switch, you know... It... Basically though, all it does is reverse things every time that it's activated. It's not really, uh... Not really something that needs great explanation. So, here's the fun part that pretty much everybody probably has been wondering about. Finally, let's use a door lock. Type in the code 681 on the keypad. Be sure to examine the settings. Okay. There's the keypad. What's the rest of this say? Make note of the reset delay. This closes the door automatically. Be warned there is no keypad on the other side, so this is one way. Okay. So... 681, and note that you can actually use your number pad or the numbers anywhere on your keyboard instead of actually typing this in uh, using the mouse. Opens the door. 321 closes the door. Now let's see how this one's wired. Because this one causes some issue with people. Uh, Shadow was having a lot of fun with this on, the, on another server last night. So, if we examine these, this really says nothing except for the auto reset time. And again, when the auto reset reaches that time, it automatically closes the door and it locks again. The device itself is actually hidden down here. This is the number comparison gate. That's not what I wanted to do. On. There we go. Okay. We did not screw that up, thankfully. Okay, press N, which is what I wanted to do. 
And this is interesting, because there are, again, a lot of different logical things you can do. For example, greater than or equal to. So if there was a clue that said, pick a number from 1 to 10, and you picked 11, and the, the key number is 10, you would get it, even though you should not be able to get it. Um, less than or equal to, greater than, less than, not equal. This is uh, really good if you want to give somebody a false code, and they enter the code and it will not activate, but if they enter anything else, it will. Kind of fun. And then, of course, we just have the equal to on this one. Again, the input and output just, it's automatic, it's just basic coordinates. Um, input 2, we see here the number, and it's set to value. If we set it to event, then it will act like the other switches over there, the logic switch, for example. But setting it to value means that you type in a specific number, and that number is what affects this. It sounds more complicated than it is. And then the door, this is the key. Note that it can interact is shut off. Let's turn it on for a moment and see where the most common issue is. Okay. Go to the number pad, 681. Door opens. Door closes. Okay. What happens if we click on the door? Oh, it opened. Well, that's no fun. What's the point of the keypad if we can just open the door? So, click on N again. Shut off the interact. And that did not work. Let's just try the... Oh, there we go. I hit cancel. There we are. The door is locked. We cannot open it. So let's go ahead through. 681 and open and through we go now again note that there's no number pad over here so if we try to open the door we cannot if you have another number pad over here though with the same combination of 681 and connect it to the other receive then the door will open on either side okay now note that shadow has pro I do not on my account and so I, I do want to keep uh, the episodes set up for um, the non-page players. I do believe in supporting the game, and I will be investing money into the game, but I am going to avoid going pro on my account. And when we do any type of pro material, I will just borrow this account, because Shadow is nice enough to allow me to use it. And... I've been using it so I don't unlock uh, special blocks and things in the uh, Let's Play world. So I'm going to do the same when it comes to the, uh, the special features that are available in a, uh, in a pro game. But I do want to show you those uh, features. So let's go to Pigsy Village for a moment. And I hope I can I hope I can do this without dying. Let it load. I like that block. It's very Mediterranean. Okay. Let's come out of this teleporter and we want to go to this teleporter. Note that those are not labeled and I'm not worried about labeling them. Um I don't think anybody actually is, because we all know where some of those go to, and those of us that don't, well, again, it's no big deal. Um, this was never removed. Huh. Well, the floating island is complete. I'm not going to wait for that to load. I will have to mention that to Shadow and let him uh, finish that so that we can put the... Uh, we actually have a chest in the uh, workshop area, which is where we just were. 
that has all of the blueprints stored away so that anybody on the server can use them without having to purchase new ones. The exception being uh, down in Pigsy Village. You can see the blue house, which I still need to do a tour of that, but I was waiting until this patch came out because I would like to actually incorporate some of the features into the house, like actual light switches. Uh, but if you look down there, you can't really see it. But each, uh, each of the active players on the server has been given their own... It's like the Hells Angels out there. Anyway, each person has been given their own copy of the blueprint for that basic house. And the reason for that is that we would like to see what each individual person comes up with in terms of customization. Okay, let's go up here. Uh, pressing the L button brings up the first fun feature. It's a flashlight! It is really good for running around in the dark. It is not very good for much else. Why is there a block missing here? Do we even have grass? We do not have grass. Okay, that needs to be fixed. Daylight approaches. Let's go ahead and shut our light off. And we are going to do something very fun if it does not lag. While waiting for it to get a little bit lighter and waiting for things to load, let's take a look at the world modifiers. All of the uh, regular worlds have default settings. If you have customized your settings back before R33's release, your world settings are preserved. However, if the world was created after R33 was released, these are not automatically uh, set. You have your typical no explosives, peaceful creatures, stuff like that. No PvP, which this is a peaceful world, so obviously that's selected. Recipes carry over. It's one that uh, a lot of people enjoy. But there are a lot of interesting new ones. Low gravity. You can float high and far, jump twice as high, and take less fall damage. You can reduce the amount of creature spawns. More treasure. You can find more treasure chests all over the place. Um, more regrowth. So if you want more mushrooms, beeswax, and flowers, and other things that grow, click that, and they actually grow back more often. You act, if you have a hard mode, which allow creatures to hit twice as hard, and when you die, you actually drop your quick bar as well, and your equipment, so you start off with nothing. Easy mode is the opposite. Creatures do half damage, and you don't drop anything, including your inventory which is interesting. And then this is another fun one. The Celestial Skybox. This is an optional skybox. It shows stars and giant planets. So it gives a, a different perspective. And I don't know if... Oh, there's a planet right there. So yeah. This does add some interesting new features. Creates a little bit more depth. And now I'm going to get to the final item. L button is for the light. G button is the glider. Now this is not a game-breaking uh, item, but it is rather fun. And I am having a lot of trouble controlling it because of the lag. Come on, don't crush into anything. You can control this with the mouse or the uh, regular keys. The vapor trails on the sides... Ooh, I almost hit that tree. The vapor trails on the sides actually show you how fast you're going. And as they get smaller, your speed is actually going down. And when your speed goes down, so do you. 
there is actually a boost option using shift. And one of the things people complained about was that the uh, pro people get additional stamina. That is actually necessary because using the shift button when gliding does give you a slight boost of speed, but it also uses your stamina. So, if you don't want to, uh, if you don't want to lose your stamina, you kind of need the extra amount. And again, the, uh, the glide feature is very lovely, but it's not it's not game breaking in any way. It's just a fun thing to do. But we will likely uh, we will likely continue to to build our uh, sky rail system and other things that we have been planning. So anyway, that is it for this episode. Um, if you look into the uh, into the other episode I am posting. Um, I do get into the uh, release notes in extreme detail, and the episode is actually about twice as long as this. But as for right now, this is pretty much R33. And it's not a whole lot per se, but at the same time, the changes are enough that it's going to keep people busy for a long time. Hello. And when I say that, I mean you can actually build puzzles that people have to solve. Uh, there's sort of an... you can do like a sort of amusement park type deal. Not really any rides, um, for the most part, but you can hook up fans to switches and things. So they solve a puzzle and it provides a, a fan ride to the next area and that sort of thing. And I really need to deal with your congestion somehow. But anyway, that is it for now. We should be resuming regular episodes starting next week. But for now, don't, uh, don't plummet to your death if you are trying to glide. And I will see you all again very, very soon.